Hey folks, Jonathan here, back uh, from doing some towing, and it's about 2 o'clock or something like that, and uh, I figured on my way back through I'd stop by Jerry's and pick up this uh, motorhome. Uh, this is the, the one that I had taken there that has the 440 we done the first start on and the automatic and he's got it stripped and ready for me and so now we just got to figure out what we're going to do with it uh this was a little different than most of them well he said it was different than any of them he'd turned torn down before uh winnebago i think but they actually welded the cross members to the top of the front which is uh pretty crazy uh, usually everything's bolted on and you're not supposed to weld to the frame flanges and there's a reason for that a good reason for it but it looks like they did anyway now I don't see any issues and I'll show you what happens okay here's the difference you see they welded on top of the frame rail on the flange that was what they call it and uh, not just what I call it but what the actual factory calls it and it's okay to weld anywhere over here you don't want to weld up here now you can see this weld don't go to the end and that's the, probably the reason that it didn't cause any issues and all of them seems to be that way until you get to this one which the cross member being there helped a little bit but I can see a little bit of a crack right here Oop, I don't know if you can see it on camera but that has actually started cracking because that weld went all the way to the edge of it and when you got a weld on the edge of you're you're begging for a problem. I've done the same thing over here for some reason. This guy wasn't welding right. And then this one uh, is right. And I don't know about the other ones. This one's not. That one wasn't done right. Well, none of them was right. But I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to weld on the edge. I guess they'd done it just because it's close to a cross member maybe or something. But uh, it's not the smart way of doing it. You, know, you definitely don't want to weld on flanges, and you don't want to weld on flanges where there's any weight at. Luckily they didn't do any up here towards the center. Or it may have cracked it. Don't see any at all. Which is a good thing. But anyway, not complaining about it. I'm just trying to show everybody. Uh, so he started to, as you can see, grind and then just decided to go ahead and just cut them off with saws off. Which is fine. I can take these off. I'd rather take them off myself anyway. Because, uh, I don't want to grind into the flange. I'd rather grind above it and then grind the weld off of it. Cut above it. So, if we use this frame for something. Okay, folks, working on the exhaust manifolds, getting them cleaned up. Wanted to paint them like a, it's a gray, silverish color, but they didn't have any uh, for the exhaust paint, the you know, the really high temperature paint. So, uh, got black, but just wanted to show, show something. Uh, these exhaust manifolds, they are light. They're a thin casting, uh, but they're in perfect shape. And pretty intricate up here. Got the uh, generator bracket bolted into them. Everything's thin. You know, it's not a real heavy casting, but it's not cracked anywhere. And they're in such good shape. And you know, cast iron is under pressure all the time. So, especially when you, you heat it, cool it, heat it, cool it, you know, a lot of times it'll crack. But for this not to have uh, cracked anywhere, I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, that's actually thin. I would be afraid to hit it with a hammer just because uh, of how thin it is. But evidently, Packard must have had their casting down really well. Uh, I'm assuming they cast these and not Studebaker, but uh, really, really nice job. So, all right, get them painted. Okay, we got the manifolds painted. Uh, really impressed with the castings. We'll go ahead and try to get these on and, and uh, if we can get everything finished up where we can get this thing fired. Also put a new freeze plug in the back of the uh, water pump housing. It looked like it was pitted some and I didn't want to take a chance on it. So we're going to get this on also. Okay, piece of advice. If you ever get in my situation, it don't matter if you break your back trying to get the daggone thing in there. Leave the manifolds on the heads. Uh, I like to have never got this thing on there. And this was the easy side. So now I've got to do the hard side. And I don't know. I just hope I can get to it. I might, you know, this might turn out to be the easier side because it looks like there's a lot more room I might can get between the fender well and the engine. 
Boy, I'm gonna do fix my ground strap down here first. Looks like we forgot to unhook that when we picked the front of the engine up, so I think I can fix that one. We'll get that done and get the manifold on. That's what's really holding me up, these manifolds. If I can ever get them on, then I can really get to roll them where we can start this thing up. So I want to hear it run. All right. All right, here's the two cylinders that didn't have any compression on them. Uh, we've already checked the other cylinders on the well on the other side. We've had at least 120 on each cylinder. So uh, we're going to check number four and six. That was our two low ones. And of course, they should be up for sure, but we'll see. One twenty is fine. That's really good for an engine that uh hadn't even been started yet, so our rings aren't seated in. All right, here's number four. Let's see what happens here. All right, just a little bit under 120, about the same, so all the cylinders within 10% of each other. Like I said, this is, it's going to change once we get it started, but uh, I think we're going to be just fine. Now, I don't know how this thing's going to roll over once we get the, the spark plugs in it. Hopefully, that starter will start it. It may not. We'll see. Uh, I'm gonna stick the plugs in it real quick and we'll roll it over and just see what it uh, see what it does. My luck, uh, it may not at all. That uh, gear reduction is $239, so I won't be buying that anytime soon. But uh, we'll figure something out here. Okay, I'm gonna roll it over with the plugs in it. <laughs> Should start. I think it'll start. We'll know we're pretty good. Not bad at all. Okay, we're gonna see if we got any oil pressure yet, and I can't see it and turn it at the same time. So I'll replay the, the video on the camera. <laughs> Okay, she started up, but I had to change the timing a little bit. I had to loosen the distributor up. I think we had it retarded too far. Hey, little buddy. Love you. All right, let's try it again.
Okay, we're not letting it run long at all, but we're gonna try to check oil pressure. pipes on it next and then uh we'll keep working away at little stuff all right okay i thought there was going to be an issue with this water pump because the guy that i got this from got back a hold of me and said that he found the water pump that came off this and it wasn't any good and the one that he gave me was too long and the other one's shorter and as you can see he's right when you put this on uh water pump must be I don't know, inch and a half long or something. But I found something else in the trunk. And this must be off of a Packard or something. So this one lines it up. Puts my fan farther forward, but it don't hit the radiator. But I don't know if we're gonna be able to clear the shroud yet, so we're gonna figure that out. But but that will work to be able to run it. So we'll get this fully cleaned up and Get it on, try to get a belt on it, and get some, we gotta get hoses and get water in it. And before we run it much. Alright, we got the downpipes on too, so I'm gonna fire it up just real quick. If it'll start, see what it sounds like. Yeah, I don't think we got a starter issue anymore. I think a lot of our issue was we just didn't have enough compression to start. short quieting it down just to be two short pipes so we're gonna eventually run it on back and I got two flow masters uh, that I picked up they're very very slightly used and we're gonna we'll put them on it see how it sounds okay while we was running it the uh, we thought there was gas coming out the fuel line and it wasn't hooked up but it kept doing it and doing it and I think we've come to the conclusion that it's oil pumping out so we've got a bad fuel pump so I'm going to have to see if I can get one on the way. Because I don't like, really like running electric. So. Alright folks, we're going to continue to figure out this uh, cooling system and get all that done. We're going to get a fuel pump for it. And just a few more things and then we'll get it where we can actually move. We've already got brakes on this one. Clutch works good. Radiator's supposed to already been fixed. Uh, gas tank's good. So shouldn't take us too long. As long as we can get a fuel pump. Uh, like I said, I'd rather have a manual than electric, so we probably won't run an electric. We'll probably just try to find a manual. But uh, I think this is going to be just fine. She runs really good. No knock. No noise. Good oil pressure. No smoke. No lifters tapping. Uh, hydraulic lifters pumped up just fine. I uh, think she's going to be ready to go. And, uh, and I don't know how it sounds on camera. It might sound like I revved this thing up for I didn't. I didn't even get close to the four barrels on it, so, uh, you know. I, I, a lot of people will complain about revving one up when it's cold, but we didn't really rev it at all. I guess uh, when we get it all together and everything, you'll hear what it really sounds like. So, uh, next video, hopefully you'll be able to see it uh, moving. And uh, I'm definitely going to 
test this thing out and see what it will actually do. So don't think I'm going to take it out there and be nice and easy on it. If, uh, if this thing's able to smoke the tires, I'm going to show you that it will. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to give you a little update on the phone line situation here. Okay, since I fixed the uh, phone line last time, we haven't had any more issues. And it did rain, as you can see in that mud hole, really hard. And luckily, nothing, no static, no anything. Uh, just wanted to address a couple things. Uh, one thing is, is the neighbor that's mowing over this, until yesterday, uh, when I fixed that line, or it may have been the day before yesterday. I, my days are on. Yeah, day before yesterday. Uh, he had no idea that was my line and because I'm closer to the main road he actually thought that that line ran from the main road down past his place but actually it don't it runs up this way toward the the main road so uh, now and he you know he's a customer of mine I've towed for him I mean there's no issues I don't have any issues with any of my neighbors we all get along just fine and uh, so that's not not a problem whatsoever uh, I know a lot of people thought maybe that I had a neighbor that I was feuding with, but I'd, I'm not one to feud with anybody. I try to keep the peace. And, uh, so anyway, uh, another suggestion was to dig and bury that cable on my own. Uh, like I said, it's a half mile. That's uh, well over 2,500 feet. Uh, there's water lines. There's other phone lines. Uh, I would probably get myself in a lot of trouble if I decided to even try to dig them and bury that cable and I can't afford to buy the cable I can't afford to buy uh, you know a half mile conduit you know there's just no no possible way so uh, I'm working with uh, the Utilities Commission we're going to try to get something figured out here because uh, you know six months is you know way too long so maybe we'll get it straightened out but hopefully we will uh, we'll get this line buried though that's the that's the main goal uh, also, I gotta have a landline. I can't have a cell, just a cell phone. Uh, when you're running Highway Patrol and Sheriff's Department, they, you know, the Highway Patrol requires you to have a landline, and so that that you know kills that. And also, uh, you know, they're they're Highway Patrol's way behind on all the rules. You know, they've even got a rule with the inspection that says you gotta have a county map. And you know, everybody's got GPSs now or got phones, smartphones with GPS, so they don't use that anymore, but it's still in the rules. So they haven't updated the rules in years. So the landline deal's still on there, still on there, they'll still follow it because it's still on there. We'll see how it, how it goes and I'll keep everybody updated, but uh, I appreciate everybody watching, I really do. And uh, I've got a really, really exciting trip coming up this weekend. Uh, it, you know, I'm gonna do a video on it. Uh, Looks like I may be getting a car that's probably nicer than any car I ever owned. And uh, it's actually got some of that, uh, what do you call it? Oh, paint. Yeah, it's got some paint on it. So uh, I look forward to that and hopefully look forward to making a video on it. So, all right. Appreciate it. Bye.